Morning, gentlemen and ungentlemen. I uh, haven't been uh, haven't been doing any videos lately. I've been busy shelling corn and uh, playing Baldur's Gate 3, which isn't very good. At least not until they add some non-evil uh, party members, because the party members that they've included are absolutely intolerable like amoral edge kitties and it's very annoying but anyway uh, I bought myself a spanky new minty 21 inch Trinitron and I paid too much money for it because other than not being beige it was the perfect monitor and it survived shipping and it came to my house beautifully packed all in one piece working flawlessly it appears to still be working flawlessly so I tested it and then I brought it up here and I set it on a chair out in the hall while I cleared off a spot on my filthy desk to set it and as I was cleaning off the desk I heard a crash and it had actually the weight of it had actually broken the chair and it had fallen to the ground and now it's mashed up so whether it's my own dumbassery or that of other people it seems like it's just not possible for me to have nice things but at least it still works. But oh, it's good that I wasn't recording some of the things that came out of my mouth. I haven't been working too much on the Model 2. There's a pile of Model 2 over there. It just hasn't been fit to paint. Um, and it is painting time uh, in addition to being busy. I mean, I can't paint in the evenings because it gets too cold in the, at night. Um, I can't today because it's it's rainy outside. So. I'm just kind of waiting for the right time. So in the meantime, uh, let's do some other things. Um, so I've got uh, this beautiful, well, formerly beautiful uh, monitor on my desk now. And um, I have this shelf up here for all of these machines. Uh, and I want to hook this monitor and this keyboard and not that mouse, but perhaps a better mouse, all up to all of the same machines and have some kind of switching mechanism. So, the way we'd normally do this is with KVM switches, of which we have several for different types of stuff. But these aren't going to work for us. We've got a bunch of different machines. These aren't all of them, there are more. Um, we have a bunch of different machines that we all we want to all connect to a VGA monitor. and. Uh, let's let's see what we've got here um, this is a Macintosh 2CI Macintosh DB15 video um, some of the scan rates are non-standard but um, these you can get adapters to convert these to VGA <coughs> Apple 2GS uses 15 kilohertz analog uh, RGB or composite video output of course the analog RGB output is the one that we want to use because that has by far the best video quality. Commodore 128D has both composite output and a TTL RGB output like CGA. Those are both driven by different chips. Um, one of them is used in 40 column mode, the other one's used in 80 column mode, so you, we have to connect to both of them, both composite video output and TTL RGB. That'll be the most challenging, I think. Of course, there is the ProLinear running Linux, which just says VGA output. Uh, this is the current uh, dumpster find um, workshop machine, um, which has a VGA output, but it only it only goes up to 1024 by 768. So that's not great with a formerly beautiful huge monitor. Um, that piece of shit back there is eventually going to just house a whole bunch of floppy drives um, and be used to um, write floppy images to 
physical media and vice versa, but it's not finished yet, but it's just a shitty PC. I think it's like a K7450 or something, maybe? I can't remember. Anyway, it's got a VGA output. Uh, what else do we have? We, of course, have the Tandy 1000s with their CGA-compatible output. Um, uh, 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 the Apple IIe, which probably won't be connected to this conglomeration. If I use it, I'll use it with the... Uh, with the monitor too. Where is it? Oh, it's down here somewhere. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we've also got uh, both the um, PyDP11 and the PyDP8, both which I'm still trying to figure out what to do about enclosures for. Uh, but they um, are both going to have HDMI outputs on them. And I mean, I could I could just use them with, with serial terminals, but um, since they've got an honest-to-god Raspberry Pi in them, it would be nice to, like, use them for more than just, you know, PDP-8 and 11 emulation. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think that, oh, yeah, we've got the, the, the Spark Station LX with a 13W3 output, but I do have VGA converters for that, so it'll operate off of VGA. And... Oh, I think the PS2 Model 25 looked better on the disc than the big monitor, but that's all right. And, of course, the PS2 Model 25, which doesn't have external video ports, but internally, that's just a 31.5 kilohertz fixed-frequency VGA monitor with a different connector on it. Um, even though the machine's only MCGA, it's still a VGA-compatible monitor. So, it's going to go back on the desk when I figure out how I'm arranging shit. And, um, I may... See, I want to... The big monitor's nice for some stuff, but, like, some stuff kind of... kind of needs, like, an old, older-school monitor, you know what I'm saying? And the PS2 Model 25 will be good for that. Um, so, yeah, now I'm going to have it on the desk because I use it for shit. Um, but I don't want to have an extra, like... Uh, even a, yet another VGA monitor sitting on the desk, because this is the whole reason for this, is to make room on my fucking desk. I can't have... it's. I mean, it's nice to use the proper original monitors with all this stuff, but I just don't have room for that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to make a board um, so that I can uh, access both the uh, monitor connector, the monitor input, and the video output from the motherboard from the back of that machine. And then I'll be able to switch external VGA signals onto it, uh, which will be useful. Um, and I guess technically I could put the output of that on the big monitor, but that would be kind of silly. Although maybe we will just for shits and giggles. So, that's a lot of different video standards. All going into just a VGA monitor, and I don't think that thing will sync lower than 31 and a half kilohertz. I seriously doubt it. So, what are we gonna do? Well, I've got almost everything here that I need to do this, but it has problems. So, um, here are two KVM switches. One of them is PS2. One of them is USB. So, the plan here was to hook these two um, KVM switches together using, uh, I mean, they're both VGA, but as, as far as the, the uh, keyboard and mouse, one of them's uh, USB and one of them's PS2. So um, I was going to use this uh, PS2 to USB converter on here, um, plug it into this KVM switch, and then plug all of this into, uh, the, like, the input of this into one of the outputs of the PS2 KVM switch. Um, I'd still have to use a PS2 mouse, but that's okay. Um, that's a project for a different different day. Um, I've got an old, uh, an old, like, classic IBM ball mouse that I want to take the guts out of and put uh, optical mouse innards into. And so that'll be an interesting project someday, but not today. Um, 
and that that'll handle all of the uh, VGA machines, um, include that the t both the PS2 and the USB ones. So that's no problem. All right. Then right here is a composite to VGA converter, which will hang off of one of these, probably the USB one, because it won't have as many of its uh, of its inputs being used, and. Um, That'll go into, uh, that would have gone into, um, not this video switch, but a different one, but this is just, you know, example, uh, composite video switch here, um, to switch between uh, the uh, composite output of the uh, uh, Commodore 128D and the uh, Atari 65XE, is it? I can't remember. We'd have to mess with that machine one of these days, too, and possibly possibly the composite output of the 2GS and the 2E, although um, I've got, you know, uh, vidHD cards and uh, RGB outputs for them, so, you know, but anyway, that would take care of those machines. Then we've got, um, and technically VGA would take care of the Macintosh as well, because um, converter of some kind. I don't have one, but I'll get one um, when we continue this project. So that leaves um, 15 kilohertz analog RGB and TTL RGB, and here is the ubiquitous um, whatever it is GBS 8200 board, the arcade uh, video converter board. That uh, it's it's basically I guess just a scan doubler. I think it might do more than that, but for my purposes, it's just a scan doubler. Um, it'll take um, some. Um, sub 31.5 kilohertz uh, RGB signals and double the scan rate uh, so that they'll display on a regular VGA monitor. So with another VGA KVM switch in between, with this in between them, we can have a bunch of 15 kilohertz um, analog RGB inputs that'll display on the VGA monitor. And that leaves TTL RGB. And, uh, Let's see here. Uh, there, there. That's what one of the pieces of protoboard is a stand-in for. To remind me about that. Um, it's possible to build uh, a little circuit to convert um, TTL RGB to analog RGB. Um, it's not as simple as just making a resistor bridge. I mean, you can do it that way, um, but uh, the uh, the brown color doesn't look great. You have to use a little bit of additional logic in there, and um, probably. Uh, video amplifier transistor. Um, anyway, there's, I've seen, I've made very cursory looks at schematics for that online, so I don't think that'll be a problem. And that'll take care of the CGA style inputs like um, on the Commodore 128D and the Tandy 1000s and whatever old CGA machines. Um, I don't think this, it's, I don't think that'll work with EGA though. Uh, but I don't have any EGA machines, and EGA is so rare that I don't plan to have one anyway. Um, as far as input, uh, I think it's Big Mess of Wires makes um, a contraption that um, converts from uh, USB or PS2 into ADB and vice versa. And um, that's actually kind of cool because I'd like to use an Apple IIGS keyboard as the main keyboard with all of this. Uh, because that's my favorite keyboard ever made. Um, they're, they're just excellent. Not the, the later Mac keyboards that kind of look the same, but the 2GS keyboard. It has uh, Alps key switches and the layout's good, controls in the right place, and it's so compact. It just fits well on the desk and it doesn't have a bunch of cruft that you don't need. It doesn't even have any function keys. Um, which could be a problem, but I mean, USB, you can have more than one keyboard connected. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, but then um, we can also use that in the opposite way to connect all of this shit uh, to the Mac and the 2GS. And this is a um, this is a video switch box that I had been using to switch just the keyboard and the mouse between uh, the 2GS and the 2CI uh, because things got uh, handles S video switching as well and uh, the uh, ADB uh, keyboards and mice just happen to use exactly the same connector as S video. Now, um, supposedly it's not actually safe to uh, hot swap ADB. Um, 
I've never burned out a keyboard. Uh, well, you don't burn out the keyboard and the mouse. You burn out the port on the computer. I've never burned out a port doing that. Um, I mean, I don't just switch between them, you know, willy-nilly like this. I always like switch to an unused input and wait for a second and then hit the other one. I think um, I think what the problem is is uh, these uh, ADB ports have this inductor um, on them. It's uh, I think it's just there to block like RFI, but I wouldn't swear to it. And um, you know how inductors work um, when you. Uh, switch off uh, power to them really quick. Uh, sometimes they like spike in the opposite way, so I assume um, that's what happens occasionally when you hot plug these things. Um, you get a spike through that inductor somehow um, if the uh, signal level is just right at the time. The inductor is not on the power line, it's on this one of the signal lines, but um, I assume that when the signal level is just right, if you hot swapped it, maybe it would cause a spike through that coil and fuck something up. And it doesn't, I, apparently it doesn't screw up the ADB interface chips, it just burns out that coil and you can just make a new one and fix it, but it would still be annoying to have to do. So, um, I'm not quite sure what to think about that. Um, some kind of anti-spike diode across the, uh, across the data lines on, uh, the, um, on the data pins on these things, on uh, the switch, I could take it apart and add those maybe. Maybe that would keep it from fucking up, I don't know. And I assume we'd tie all the power lines together through diodes to keep them from backfeeding each other and shit too, you know? So that would keep, you know, power line connect disconnect from, uh, from fucking the shit up too. And uh, maybe, maybe it just has something to do with differences in ground potential and the grounds would be connected together too and that would eliminate that. So. I don't know. That's uh, that's my thought on hot swapping ADB anyway. I've never fucked anything up doing it, but I've read stories about people that have, and I'm not going to cast aspersions on them because who am I to say that it doesn't happen one time in like 10,000 or something. Anyway, supposedly the same the same is true of uh, of uh, PS2 ports. Um, you're not supposed to hot swap PS2 stuff either. Now I've done that a whole lot more than I've hot swapped uh, ADB stuff and I've also never had a problem with that. But um, I tried testing a bunch of this stuff, see, and um, you of course have great big long runs of cable between these different KVM switches and all this shit so you end up with like 70 miles of cable between the actual computer and the actual monitor and like all of this like log boxes in between and stuff like that. The, the, the long story short is uh, the video signal picks up a lot of noise going through all this shit and you can see it go you know, and it's, it's not cool. Now I, I do, I've got some uh, I've got some shitty little uh, Snap-on RF chokes that I'm, well, that one's too small, but I've, I've got a bunch of different sizes. One of these will fit. I'll just have to figure out which one. But I've got these Snap-on RF chokes that I was thinking about uh, putting onto these shitty uh, VGA cables that came with one of these switches. And that might clear things up a little bit, but um, that's, that's one big problem. And the other big pro problem is um, having to figure out how to arrange the different, like, sets of buttons and all this shit to switch between different machines with this big line of shit. Um, big pain in the ass. So, we do however have our $6 ESP32 microcontroller with a fuck ton of I.O. pins. And uh, if we run out of I.O. pins, they're like I2C I.O. expander ICs. And we could program one of these to handle all of this switching for us. And um, it's it's got a, a, a wireless interface on it, so we can set all we can set all of that stuff up with a nice little like text-based interface where we'd like telnet or SSH into the into the into the inter into the thing, you know, and like say like in order to select the Commodore 128D 80 column output, then each of these devices has to be in this certain state and we could use the LEDs on these different devices as to sense, you know, like when it has selected the right thing and all this shit. And that would be one way to do it, but the other way to do it would be, you know, that would take a lot of pins, you know, sniffing all these LEDs and switching all these different things and all that shit. But the other way to do it would be to take apart these KVM switches and see how they work, and then we could just build our own and take this thing out of its enclosure and build all of this stuff 
together into one little box and use really short connections between all of the different boards and have like um, everything shielded so there's not a getting a bunch of RFI interference I, that's like saying ATM machine so we're not getting a bunch of RFI um, over these long shitty cables that are strung everywhere and all of that stuff and then we just plug one monitor, one keyboard, and one mouse into our box and a whole bunch of computers and rock and roll. It would be beautiful and it would probably be great big and tremendous but that's okay because I've got great big ammo cans that we could build something like that in. Anyway, so if you're still with me after all of that bullshit, let's, um, let's take apart these KVM switches and see how they work. Um, hopefully we can figure out. Hopefully they're not stupidly complicated. My guess is that the analog, that the VGA switching is just done by, probably done by analog switch ICs. Um, now, there might be something extra going on with the PS2 stuff. Um, because they're supposedly not hot swappable. And I want to see if they've got any kind of protection shit in here, or something funny going on, or whether they're just switching them straight up. And uh, I'm curious about how the uh, USB switching works as well, because um, if you switch USB devices too fast, sometimes they get confused. So maybe they're, they've got a microcontroller inside of here that like um, replicates the, the HID protocol shit to the different ports and from the different ports to the different ports between the different ports is what I'm trying to say maybe or something ah uh, something like that yes so um let's do it let's start with uh the PS2 one and my greatly oversized screwdriver because apparently coronavirus keeps the hardware store from getting new screwdrivers I could use a screwdriver from some other pile of tools that I've got, but I've got piles of tools in different places for different purposes. And if I start mixing tools between them, I will go to do something and not have the right damn tool. But I could do with a little bit shorter number two Phillips head screwdriver, couldn't I? Anyway, I digress. Let's tear this mofo to pieces, shall we? Let's see if I can lose those screws before we're done, because I'm pretty good at that shit. If my luck today goes the same way as yesterday when I smashed up my brand new fucking monitor, um, oh lord, what is wrong with me? I'm so dumb. I hadn't even been drinking when I did that either. Uh, well, I'm going to have to get a magnifying glass. <laughs> so I looked up um, all the chips, and uh, let's just start on the left and go over here. Um, these two chips, actually this one, this one, this one, and this one, all four of those are 74HC4052s. Those are a dual four-channel analog multiplexer, so yeah, basically an analog switch IC, four of them. Presumably one for each uh, KVM set, although I'm not sure why this one's way over here. Maybe there's something different going on. Now, um, these two larger chips are both um, 74HC244s, which is a uh, an 8-bit um, tri-state buffer line driver chip. Uh, I'm not sure what the purpose of those is. Um, the circuit's really hard to trace. The, you know, the traces go under chips and under ports and shit and you can't really tell where anything's going. But anyway, um, this little chip right here, um, that's a f uh, 14011B um, I don't know why they didn't use a 74 series logic chip in there. That's like a Motorola numbering, I guess, but um, that's a, just a regular old quad 2N NAND gate, although the pinout's probably different than the 74 series. And um, 
This chip down here is a 14017 um, uh, decade counter. So um, my guess is that these two chips and probably this capacitor here um, are used by the push button uh, for selecting the inputs. It uh, probably steps this decade counter through um, 0 to 3 and then resets it back to 0 somehow with some of these gates um, when it uh, when it reaches 4. Um, so, it, so you go through the the different sets of shit and uh, that'll probably turn some enable line on to um, one of these analog switch ICs. Now, I don't quite understand what the 244s are for. I thought maybe since um, <coughs> since uh, PS2 protocol is basically just TTL serial, um, maybe they were uh, using those to switch shit around on these uh, PS2 ports, but why would they use an 8-bit tri-state buffer for that? There's some great big diodes here. Uh, it looks like there's a great big diode for each set of uh, PS2 ports. And then there are a whole bunch of much smaller diodes on here, and I'm not sure what those are for. I'll bet these diodes are to keep the power from the different PS2 ports from mixing and going back out other PS2 ports on here. I bet that's what the big rectifier diodes are for. But these little diodes, um, maybe those are the anti-spike diodes. I don't know why you would need so many. There are a dozen of them on there. Uh, no, and, and here's some more over here, although these probably these probably have something to do with this uh, switcheroo here, but all this stuff, I don't know, man. There are also some little surface mount transistors here, arranged in the, the very same way <coughs> for each of the video ports, and maybe, um, I mean, I figured the analog switches would be what how, how they would do it, but I'm not... I'm not really any uh, any smarter on how they were handling the PS2. I did trace one of these uh, one of the data lines, and it just goes straight into one of these. So sure. Now these transistors, there are three of them on each VGA port, and um, they appear to be connected to the RG and B pins on the port. So uh, the, that must be the only reason that they must have put them in there because there was somehow some signal loss between the input port and the output port when it was switched in. Um, I don't know why else they would have done that. There doesn't seem to be any transistor on either of the sync lines. It just goes straight through as far as I can tell. But on the RG and B lines, they've got those transistors. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. All right, so um, we found out some stuff about that one. Let's go ahead and tear apart the USB one and see if it is any different. Okay, so here's the inside of the USB KVM switch, and this is pretty entertaining. They went, uh, they went, went full-on transistor switching on the VGA ports on this one, um, rather than just those three transistors. Uh, we've got, what, six, eight of them. Ten of them. Uh, so, that's pretty impressive. Um, I'm not sure why you need 10, maybe they're switching some of those sense lines or something too. You ought to just need uh, RGB horizontal sync, vertical sync, right? Oh, oh, that's five, but then there's five more somewhere. Uh, I2C protocol runs on a couple of those pins for um, monitor capability detection too, as far as I recall, but that'd only be a couple more, that'd be seven, so <clears throat> that would leave us with three Maybe they're switching the separate uh, signal ground returns too instead of tying them all just to ground on the board. I don't know. Anyway, fascinating. Um, we have, once again, big diodes on the USB ports, presumably to keep the power from mixing up around in there and fucking around with stuff. Um, these two little square chips are um, CT3253s, which are dual one of four 
uh, FET multiplexers, so analog switch chips, once again. But um, that's uh, since they're dual, that's going to give us four channels of four. So um, what they're switching with those, I haven't quite looked at yet. I don't know, USB signals or something like that. I'm not sure. Now this this little chip right here, it um, the 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 printing on it is just too dim to read. I can't figure out what this chip is. Thanks, China. Um, it looks like uh, the um, lines from the push button go to it pretty directly, though, so it must have something to do with uh, selection. So it may not be important as far as, you know, our analysis goes. It just might handle the logic of stepping through the different inputs, which we would be doing with um, GPIO pins anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then this little boy over here is a USB hub chip. Well, it's, it's got three USB inputs here, right? Um, for keyboard and mouse and something else, I guess. And then um, it uh, must switch the output of that USB hub chip onto each of these um, USB ports through these analog switch chips somehow. And um, I guess if this is some kind of itty bitty, oh, excuse me. I guess if this is some kind of itty bitty microcontroller, maybe it um, can insert a little bit of switching delay to keep the USB devices from getting confused if you switch them real fast, because you've got to have time for the computer to realize that shit's happening when, well, I guess the devices themselves aren't getting switched onto this port, just this USB hub chip, but the um, computers that are being switched between have to have a moment for the software to... Um, you know, talk to this USB device and decide that it's connected and, you know, do shit. And if you cycle through those too fast, I mean, maybe this chip doesn't do that, but I've had, like, other devices get confused when you try to round robin, robin them too fast between machines. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's interesting. In some ways it's uh, much simpler, but in some ways it's a little bit more beefy than the other one. Since we've got all these transistors on this USB board, it um, makes me think maybe the only reason that these uh, board has three, these three transistors on here is just because maybe they, they ran out of channels on those uh, analog switch ICs and had to uh, use some transistors instead. It's also worth noting that this one completely lacks all of the little diodes. So these diodes must keep the uh, PS2 ports from fucking with each other. So we've got how many here? We've got a dozen here. There are ten ports right there. So, I don't know, man. They don't, like, divide evenly into each other. Although if we had, you know, now, no, they still wouldn't divide into each other, right? I don't know, man. Try to, I'll try to put some anti-spike diodes across the signal lines um, on our prototype circuit, assuming we ever get around to building it, and hope that that is good enough to keep the ports from blowing something up. Alright, on the USB one, uh, a lot of the ID pins on uh, the VGA connectors aren't even connected, and there's a pin 9 here. Um, that's a that's a key on some VGA ports, um, and it's used as a five volt supply um, for some later monitors that use some kind of serial protocol on pin 15 here to do monitor ID shit, um, and it's not hooked up on the USB KVM switch either. Now on the PS2 one. Um, all of the pins are connected. Um, I, I think it's switching all of these ID lines as well, which is kind of peculiar. So I guess I guess they cheaped out a little on the later one. I don't think I need to switch. I don't think I need to switch these ID lines um, in my own circuit. All I really need to switch are R G B and horizontal and vertical sync, right? Um, I can just tie all of the grounds together, that shouldn't hurt anything, it'll just keep ground potentials equal across everything. 
I guess if I do have to switch all these ID pins and shit, I can add that to the circuit later. I don't know, so that's five. That's five things to switch for VGA. Okay. Alright, so, uh, chicken scratch man here. Here's the plan, Stan. Uh, we'll use a 74HC4051. It's an 8 input analog multiplexer chip that's good from uh, negative 5 volts to positive 5 volts. Um, so that should be more than enough for video. This isn't taking uh, keyboard and mouse into account right now. I'll add that later. There's room over here for that. Anyway, um, so uh, since there are five signals, RGB, horizontal, vertical sync, that we need to switch on each of these eight uh, video input ports, we'll use five of those 4051 chips. Um, and uh, we can add more than eight VGA inputs later um, if we have to because these chips have an enable active low input that we can uh, we can run with a uh, with more pins on a microcontroller and um, you know select uh, more than eight inputs there so this uses a, a three binary digits to select um, this chip uses three binary digits to select uh, which of the eight um, inputs or outputs doesn't matter which gets connected to the shared input or output. So um, that'll take three pins on the microcontroller to decode initially. Okay. And that'll select uh, these five video signals that'll pass on into the circuit. And here we'll have our uh, TTL to analog uh, conversion for um, CGA cards. We'll use the same connector well, we won't use the same connector, we'll use the same lines here um, for TTL or RGB video. But we'll use another one of these analog switch ICs. And we'll uh, have to use a different analog switch IC uh, here for that. Um, oh, there's, there's another one that, that'll work for that. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Using a mul multiplexer ICs over here, the 4051. But here we've got five video signals um, coming through at a time. So we have to have five separate switches there instead of a multiplexer. Or a two-to-one multiplexer would probably work for this. Um, there's probably a, a quad two-to-one analog multiplexer chip that would work. It's, it's not a quad uh, two-input multiplexer. Uh, there's, it's a triple two-input multiplexer. I just stopped and looked it up. The uh, 744053 is what we'll have to use here. Um, so it'll take two of those to get... Uh, six channels we only need five of them but uh, that'll be um, so that'll be four of those all together and uh, then it'll be six of those uh, uh, 4051s and then like a transistor or something so yeah that uh, that ought to work I think the point is um, we'd be able to use this switching shit here to switch that TTL to analog conversion circuit in or out. Um, so we just wire a different connector, a DB9 on here for a composite or video, or uh, not composite, for a, like a CGA or TGA type input. And then when um, the software switched to that, it would switch this as well and throw that TTL to analog converter into the circuit there, uh, converting it to analog RGB. Uh, 15 kilohertz analog RGB, which comes to the next one. That's where we add our um, GBS 8200 into the circuit here. And um, same sort of switching mechanism here that we used over here. Some kind of 2 to 1 analog multiplexer. Five inputs. Down here, um, we'll have a uh, single, another one of these um, 8 to 1 multiplexer chips. And uh, to each of the uh, Y inputs on that, we'll have a composite, we can connect a composite video signal. And um, that'll switch, oh, I forgot to draw in here, a composite to VGA converter. And then we have to have another analog switch right here because I'm a dumbass. Um, so then that'll, uh, that'll allow us to take these composite signals from all the different old computers that uh, have composite outputs, and tons of them, and perhaps video game systems as well, um, if I ever manage to 
I'm back in my GameCube and play some Resident Evil again. Um, that'll allow us to switch it uh, on and off of the VGA monitor as well. This, uh, this uh, multiplexer here will have some kind of enable pin on it, so in order to cut all of this shit back here out of the circuit and allow composite video through here, we'll just have to deassert whatever enable input that is on that multiplexer. And then we have a VGA output right here to our monitor. Yay. And that doesn't take um, that doesn't take the keyboard shit into account, but um, if we have extra pins, well no, that's not going to work for that. We'll have to have something different for um, for the keyboard and mouse, but we can add that later. We'll see. I'll have to have to do a little more thinking about that, but um, I think once we do this, it'll be less uh, less prone to noise, especially because it, you know all the connections will be nice and short. We won't have all this separate shit connected together, and everything will be shielded together in one box. And hopefully, that'll make everything happy. And I might actually have another multiplexer on here so we can switch this signal between different screens as well. I at least want to be able to switch between the big monitor and some kind of smaller, like, um, less flat, like, old-schooler uh, fixed-frequency CRT of some kind. So, uh, yeah. I guess I'll order a bunch of parts and we can start farting around with um, proto boards and stuff. Yay. Uh, that's just when the weather isn't fit to uh, to work on that model too. So, um, or when I get tired of it, which also happens. But anyway, yeah. As soon as uh, as soon as I have a day, a whole day to myself, where I can paint in the morning and let it cure before it gets cold at night, and um, the weather's decent, we will um, try to finish that keyboard. I'm, I'm going to have to um, the, for the model too. I mean, and I'm going to have to order some kind of foil to um, fix the key switches with too, so um, yeah, that'll be, once we get the keyboard working, then we can start working on uh, the rest of the machine, because without a working keyboard, we can't very well, you know, test the machine, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's the plan. Um, hopefully this will, uh, hopefully this will work and not uh, further damage my formerly beautiful, brand new 21 inch Trinitron. Stupid. Alright, thanks for joining me. See you all later.